your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia, you got some matches over there? There's some on the little table right next to you, David. If you bother to look. I'd rather bother you. Is it less of a bother? Much less. <laughs> then reach out and help yourself to the matches. What kind of tobacco do you smoke, Mr. Norton? Well, Jeff, I'm not terribly fussy, but I, I like a little Turkish in it. I think I'd like to smoke a pipe, too. Well, a pipe's a great consolation, Jeff. It's the one thing which a wife can't take away. <laughs> Seems to me that pipe between your teeth is the one I bought you. Mm, nothing is sacred. I edit my statement. Even a man's pipe is no longer his own, Jeffrey. Still, I think I'd like to smoke a pipe. Well, why don't you? Do you think I'm old enough? Sixteen? Going on seventeen? I think you're old enough. I'll have to get myself one. They're ever so much nicer than cigarettes, I think. Women smoke cigarettes, Jeff. My father smokes them, too. I don't think he smokes a pipe. Roger, no, I've never seen him with a pipe. I know he likes a good cigar. I don't like cigars. Not for me, anyway. <laughs> well, not quite yet. Would you like to borrow one of my pipes? Oh, oh I, I couldn't. I mean, pipes are very personal, aren't they? David never offered me one. I'm never even allowed to touch them or polish them or even hide them. Oh, you're different. <laughs> Come over here, Jeff. Pick one out. I'll show you how to clean it and polish it up. David. Now, he's big enough. Mr. Norton, you're swell to me. You and Mrs. Norton. Ever since you brought me here when I left school... We're, I, uh, I, we're not talking about that. It's it's forgotten. Well, I, I just want to say this is the nicest home I've ever and had. We and we like having you. Now, now, which pipe will it be? Why not wait until after dinner? And the two of you can spend a glorious evening telling each other stories about pipes. Oh, where did I put those matches? You certainly have to be lighting that pipe very often, don't you, Miss Norton? Yes, Lawton? don't you, David? Is it working well? A pipe draws, Jeffrey. It doesn't work. Oh, and this one is drawing fine, thank you. But it is not working. Now, Claudia, another word about my pipe and I'll take you over my knee. <laughs> Listen, there's Bluff. I've been wondering where he was. I was afraid he'd run away again. Would you like me to go out and bring him into the house? Oh, would you mind, Jeffrey? It's getting dark. Oh, I'd like to. But don't you two decide you're going to take a walk. Dinner's almost ready. Don't pay any attention to her, Jeff. If you want to take a walk, go right ahead and don't let her stop you. But dinner is almost on the table, David. Bluff and I'll just go down to the brook and back. Well, this is a nice time of day here on the farm. It's awfully damp by the brook, Jeffrey. The water stays there hours after the rain. You, you, you get your feet wet. If you want to get your feet wet, Jeff, go right ahead and get them wet. If you want to miss dinner, go right ahead and miss dinner. You're very tough, aren't you? Mm, tough as nails. I'll be right back, Mrs. Norton, in time for dinner and with my feet dry. <laughs> <laughs> He's a nice boy, isn't he? A smart boy, too. Hmm. He's already learned that a little flattery goes a long, long way. Is that how you're going to be with our son? Undermining me all the time? Mm, all the time. You like being a father, don't you? It's an unavoidable result of marriage. Well, there's nothing for you to be so proud about. <laughs> you make a lovely father. Telling a boy to smoke a pipe, telling him to get his feet wet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you talk to Roger today? Yeah, he called me. I told him he's a very lucky father to have such a fine son. That was a nice thing to say. It's true. I know. I, I don't care how much of a jam Jeff got himself into. He, he can't be blamed for all his confusion and distress. David, I, I wonder about Roger and Mrs. Killian. I think it's awful to think that from the day Jeffrey was old enough to go away to school, since he was about six, his mother's acted only like a distant relative. Well, maybe we don't know the whole story. Well, I don't think we have to. What's so much more interesting about gallivanting around the country doing politics than, than staying home taking care of a husband and child? David, we aren't meddling, are we? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, our taking Jeffrey here and trying to help him to get straightened out, that isn't meddling. Well, is Roger it? considers it a favor. I hope so. Oh, how I'd hate to have been Jeffrey. Say, somebody's coming to see us. 
That's an Eastbrook taxi. Suppose it's Roger? Couldn't be. I spoke to him in Chicago just a few hours ago. David, it's a woman. She's getting out of the taxi. She's coming up to the door. Well, maybe she's in the wrong place. She rang the bell. Brilliant observation. Well, h- hello. Mrs. Norton? Yes, I'm she. I'm Mrs. Killian. Good evening. Oh, good evening. I understand that my son Jeffrey is here. Well, he's out with the dog just now, getting his feet wet by the brook. He's what? I mean, uh, won't you come in? My husband's inside. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll come in. Jeffrey will be right back. Well, hello, Mrs. Killian. I've been looking forward to meeting you. So you're my... Mr. Killian's partner. Yes, I'm sorry we haven't met before this. I don't usually barge in on people this way, but as you can understand, I've been very upset. Of course you have. Perhaps we should have got in touch with you, but your husband... I mean, Roger said not to bother, that you were probably very busy where you were. In California, wasn't it? Thoughtful of Roger, but... I happened to telephone Jeffrey's school, and they told me the whole distressing story. They didn't know where he'd gone, so I called Mr. Killian's office and learned he was staying here with you. Naturally, I came east right away. Naturally. But there really isn't going to be anything to be upset about. Jeffrey is perfectly fine. You've been very hospitable. But I'm sure you won't mind if I take Jeffrey back to New York with me tonight. I'm not sure he'll want to go. He seems to be enjoying the experience of living on a farm. That's fine for a few days, but I've arranged for Jeffrey to spend his summer touring through Mexico with a group of boys. Oh! And I've got to be going back to California for a few in a few days, so I'd like to get his clothes for him before I leave. He's going to be alone again this summer. Alone with a group of boys? Well, look, Mrs. Norton, I'll be frank. I lead a very busy life. I'm doing as much for my child as I can, and I really don't think I need to be given any advice by some people who are young enough to be my children. But maybe because we are that young, we can understand Jeffrey that much better. You seem to think that Jeffrey demands a lot of understanding. Of course he does. He's not the kind of boy who cheats on an exam out of sheer whimsy. I'd rather not talk about that till I know more about it. David, why don't you go out and get Jeffrey? Tell him his mother's here. Why don't you go on? All right, if you like. Besides which, dinner must be almost ready by now. We'll be back in a minute. You'll be very pleased with the way Jeffrey looks, Mrs. Killian. I saw him during the Christmas holidays. He seemed quite fine then. Oh, he's grown a lot more. You seem to feel you know a lot more about my son than I do. Maybe we do. Let's be frank, Mrs. Killian. I don't blame you for thinking that David and I are a couple of meddlers... But you see, we have a home here, a real home, and Jeffrey's been longing for one. I have a great many responsibilities, Mrs. Norton. I have quite an important place in politics, and I can't sacrifice it for one person, for a boy who... I work for many, many people. I don't see how you can set a country straight until you set a home straight. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, maybe I don't know anything about politics or countries or causes, but I do know that there's nothing more important than a marriage, particularly when it means giving a child you've brought into the world a real chance of growing up happy and secure. It's not always as simple as it sounds. It's got to be kept simple, and that's up to you. A wife, if she's a mother especially, has a terribly big job. You're very much in love with your husband, aren't you? Very much. That makes a difference. And, of course, your husband's very much in love with you. That's even more important. But your husband is such a fine man. And he's so alone, too. Being a fine man and being a fine husband are sometimes two different things. Roger and I started out very much the way you did years ago. But he wasn't suited to being a husband. At least, not mine. I suppose I wasn't suited to being his wife. Perhaps it's unfortunate that we both had to be parents. Still, you are. And Jeffrey deserves everything you can give him. I don't think it would be such a sacrifice for you to give him a father and a mother. I know it's easy for me to talk because, as far as I can see, I'll never have to make a choice. I want my husband... I want my children, and I want to make a home for them. It must be terribly difficult for you. 
nothing's impossible or too difficult. You believe in it? That's how I feel. And I hope maybe you'd... Oh, there comes Jeffrey and David now. What do you think of your son? What? He's smoking a pipe. And he's gotten so tall. He looks like a man. He isn't, though. Not at heart. It's just the pipe. They seem very happy together. They are. But Jeffrey'd be happy with anybody who'd give him some attention and love. Well, we're back and no wet feet. You'll both get gold stars. <laughs> Hello, Mother. We didn't expect you. You're looking fine, Jeffrey. Mr. and Mrs. Norton have been swell to me. You look like a man. Oh, it's the pipe. That's just part of it, Jeff. I hurried east as soon as I heard that... Well, I... I hope you don't mind my coming. We were just going to have dinner. And you're going to stay, aren't you, Mrs. Killian? Well, there's a train tonight and I... Don't I... take it. Stay here instead. Stay the night. The four of us have so much to talk about. Jeffrey, would you like me to? It's all settled. Come on, David, let's go set an extra place for dinner. Oh, well, I'll do it. You'll do nothing of the sort. Jeffrey, why don't you show your mother the upstairs? Well, don't worry about a thing, Mrs. Norton. I'll take care of mother. <laughs> now, now all we can do is break the news to Gertrude that there's an extra person for dinner. Gertrude hmm? won't mind. Even Gertrude knows that the bigger the family, the better. Oh, David, cross your fingers and pray that the Killian family is going to be a family. Have you been giving Mrs. Killian a piece of your mind, Methuselah? Well, you gave Jeff a pipe, didn't you? Mm, yes. For All courage. I had to give Mrs. Killian was a little piece of my heart. For courage, too. Oh, David. I hope I haven't been stuffy or anything. If it's a piece of your heart you've given her, darling, then it's a piece of something I love very much. And Mrs. Killian should be much the wiser for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes when people drop in of an evening, there comes a stiff lull, a, a lag in the conversation. Know how you can brighten such moments? Step out to the refrigerator and bring in a tray full of ice-cold Coca-Cola. The pause that refreshes breaks the social ice as few things do, whether guests are young or old. Buy Coke, buy the case, and you'll be ready for social emergencies at any time. Jeff has just shown me around the house, Mr. King. It's a charming place, isn't it? Yes, David and Claudia are building it into a fine home, I think. She's an amazing young woman. I'm glad I've met her. Well, you know, Mrs. Killian, your husband comes up here very often. Indeed. And it does seem to agree with him. He likes to stretch out under the apple tree and watch the clouds go by. Well, I'll be leaving in a day or so with Jeff. Then the apple tree will be all his again. Mm, Claudia has a mysterious look about her, so nothing would surprise me, Mrs. Killian. And you'd better make up your mind that nothing will surprise you tomorrow, either. Till then, Mrs. Killian, goodbye. You made me very curious, Mr. King, but goodbye. Well, as I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. An ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.